what is nothing? I mean, obviously nothing is the lack of something, but well, what does it look like, you know? What does it sound like? You might be thinking, Jackson, obviously nothing sounds just like that, nothing, but I disagree. Because how can you ever know what nothing really sounds like if you've never experienced true nothingness? About a year ago, I stumbled onto an artist that goes by the name Slossom Malone. He's got about three main projects, you know, they're all different, varying in title and length, but they're all similar in that they all end in the same two words. Crater speak. I think I found what nothing sounds like. The world is coming to an end. Hey guys, uh, Jackson here. Um, I'm sorry. Okay, I was supposed to have a haircut on Saturday, and my barber got COVID. So, you're just gonna have to deal with... Okay. So yeah, creator speak. Slossom alone. We're talking about it. But of course, like all of my other videos, before we can talk about creator speak and everything that comes with that, we have to first sit down and have a conversation about who Slauson Malone is. The person behind the Slauson Malone character is actually a guy named Jasper Marsalis, who is most known for his work with the experimental neo-soul group Standing on the Corner. However, Jasper has been releasing music underneath the Slauson Malone name since way before Standing on the Corner was even a glimpse in the average rate your music enjoyer's eyes. Without getting too Wikipedia-y on you guys right out of the gate, uh, Jasper was born and raised in Los Angeles by his mother, Victoria Rowell, and his father, Wynton Marsalis. I only bring this up because Jasper's mom is actually a somewhat famous actress, and his dad is actually part of a long line of jazz musicians. Jasper's dad, grandfather, and great-grandfather were all a part of the music industry, as well as three of his uncles. To say that Jasper was destined for a career in the arts is an understatement, but I do admire him for straying away from both acting and jazz, and kind of finding his own sound and path by himself. All of Jasper's early work as Sloss and Malone are mostly just beat tapes and DJ mixes that fall underneath the umbrella of glitchy hip-hop, and for the most part, they're pretty regular. In fact, I really don't think he started coming into his own as a musician until his work was standing on the corner. As of making this video, the group has released two albums, Self Titled and Red Burns. The group's sound is extremely unique and has garnered major critical acclaim not just from their respective solo projects but also from their collaborations. However, and this is a big however, we're not here to talk about Standing on the Corner or even Sloss and Malone's early work. And now that we finally have a surface level understanding of who Jasper Marsalis is, we're finally ready to talk about one of music's most topical trilogies. Ladies and gentlemen, Crater Speak. <laughs> Slauson Malone's debut album, A Quiet Farewell 2016-2018, Crater Speak, was released on April 18th, 2018, and oh my god, do we have a lot to talk about. The first thing I want to bring up is the track list. Wow, that is a lot of words. But for a bit of a good reason, I promise. You've probably already noticed by now, but at the end of almost every song is a prompt saying to the viewer to see a page. What this is referencing is a book that was released alongside this album, also titled Crater Speak. And when I tell you I looked everywhere for a copy of this book, I mean I looked everywhere. I scoured the internet, I scoured forums, I emailed art galleries, I went on Reddit. I went on Reddit. I almost didn't make it back, but even though I was not able to find a way to get a physical copy, I was able to snag some scans from a podcast Patreon of mine uh, named Boat. So thank you, Boat, for letting me in on these extremely well-kept secrets. <clears throat> but if, uh, if for some reason you're watching this and you have a spare copy, uh, you can you can hit me up on Twitter or Instagram or Discord. Please. Anyways, as I was saying, the songs all link to different pages of this book, and so I'll be using that to kind of cross-check the themes that I've been catching on my very many listens of this album. A Quiet Farewell is an album that spans a lot of different topics, but I can kind of boil it down into just one sentence. Both the Earth and our respective societies are on the brink of collapse, and yet I have no choice but to gaze into the madness and observe. In a paragraph that he wrote on Twitter, Jasper talked about a particularly tough few years, 
2016-2018 to be specific, where he felt like his musical and personal life were crumbling. Having so much nothingness in his own life, Jasper chose to gaze instead into the outside world to see what he could find. And what he saw was disgusting. Quote, global white supremacy, global warming, post-colonialism slash post-blackness, black death, and the spectacle of black suffering, end quote. This brings us to the narrative of A Quiet Farewell. It's the sound of Jasper plunging into nothingness, a metaphorical crater like the cover, just to discover that the world surrounding him is a mess. If my description sounds a little jumbled, that's because it is. This album, as well as the rest of the Crater Speak series, all deal with very heavy topics that can be really tricky to describe from someone who has such a privileged perspective. But luckily, this album's production does a great job of helping the listener grasp these ideas. The instrumentals on this thing are unreal. I mean, genuinely unlike anything that I've ever heard from any artist, period. The glitchy and distorted beats build up this feeling of impending doom anytime I turn on the album. God, I, I hate that I'm about to make this comparison, but the instrumentals on this album remind me a lot of the end of Fight Club. You know, when the whole city is kind of crashing down and all the main character can do is kind of stand there and watch. I don't know. I gotta throw in one film reference. Okay, sue me. Jasper also adds in a lot of reoccurring symbols and lines into the beats that add a whole other layer into the music. For example, there's this super distorted screaming sound that Jasper says is supposed to represent a death at the hands of white fear. The other prominent motif is the lyric, smile at the past when I see it. Jasper has also commented on this line, saying that when Caleb Giles first wrote it for the song Smile Number no. 1, he quickly became obsessed with it and its implications. When talking about the lyric in question, Jasper said, quote, I feel myself rubbing up against the fabric of our collective history. Things become nonsense, proxies reveal themselves, and the shape of truth becomes flatter. I see us, collectively smiling, imagining a place called the past that isn't." End quote. All of these pieces of insight, personal history, producing skill, and commentary come together to create the masterpiece that is A Quiet Farewell. And if somehow you've made it this far into the video without listening to it, I highly, highly recommend you do. Jasper set an incredibly high standard for the rest of his time as Lost and Malone with this album. When I first finished listening to this album in 2021, I was nervous to move on in his discography, especially after I found out that his next project was actually a sequel to this album. But against my better judgment, I listened, and wow. Wow. Remember. The next Lost and Malone project would come in the form of a 24 minute long EP called Vergangen Heights Bewaltigung. Vergan. Ver, Vergangen Heights Bewaltigung. Vergangen Heights Bewaltigung. The cover is an obvious nod to the cover of A Quiet Farewell and is actually a photo of a tattoo that a fan got after listening to A Quiet Farewell. This release, which I'll be calling Project 2 from now on, for obvious reasons, um, is actually formatted very similarly to the way that A Quiet Farewell is. The songs all reference the same Crater Speak book as A Quiet Farewell did, and the EP also features a lot of sequels to songs that appeared on the previous album, such as The Message, Smile, and The Wake. From an instrumental standpoint, Project 2 goes for a far more natural and acoustic sound than A Quiet Farewell did. The glitchy sounds are still prevalent, but most of this album is run by gorgeous sounding trumpets, piano, vocals, and of course, guitar that's performed by Jasper himself. Personally, I think this new sound is super refreshing, and it offers the listener a taste of something different while still having that same Sloss and Malone feel. Much like the instrumentals, the tone of this album sticks pretty close to A Quiet Farewell while also offering a lot of new and original ideas. The title of this EP comes from a German term, meaning, quote, a struggle to overcome the negatives of the past as well as an attempt to analyze, digest, and learn to live with it." End quote. So once again, we're dealing with themes of looking at the past to try to prevent the future from becoming a total shithole. Which, let's be honest, I feel like we're already living. If A Quiet Farewell is a great realization of how horrible our world has become, this second project is the mental aftermath of that. The EP starts out with the song Smile Number no. 7, and I think the opening lines do a fantastic job of setting the tone. Feel crazy, feel crazy. 
I personally interpret this as being the emotions that Jasper might have felt after the events of the first album. Obviously, this is really heavy speculation on my part, as well as a lot of projection about how I feel about this album, but at this point there's not much else to go off of. The rest of the album is littered with imagery of terror for what our world has become. The next song, Smile Number 6, literally starts out with a two minute long instrumental over the sounds of a chopped up sample of a guy saying I'm scared over and over and over again. The rest of the song sees Slauson rapping about generational trauma as well as a lot of the present day issues that I talked about with A Quiet Farewell. But with all that being said, I think that the most important part of this entire EP is the final song, The Wake Part 3 and 2. The lyrical content seems to be Slauson talking to a friend, saying that he'll be with him until he dies, and he'll even be at his side at his wake. However, the more and more I listen to the song, the more I think that he's not talking about an actual person, but the human race in general. Because at the end of the day, that's what this entire Creator Speak project has been about. The failures of human beings as a race, and the consequences of those actions. So naturally, he ends this EP with the message that, despite our horrible actions and extreme flaws, he'll be with the human race, or at least forced to be with the human race, until the very end. So, what comes after the end? Back in April of 2022, seemingly without warning, Slauson Malone released a double single called Four Star Crater Speak. When I first listened to this project, I had a lot of expectations for how it would sound. You know, it would probably have some glitch hop elements, some good singing, you know, maybe some acoustic guitar again, or something cool like from his last project. And I could not have possibly been more wrong. I mean, yes, there are a few small segments that include some glitchy elements, but these two songs are ambient songs, like electronic, ambient, otherworldly songs. The first track in the release, Smile Number 8, features the same chord progression as all the other Smile songs, but it's so much more spacey and distant. And then the next song, Smile Number 55, is like the exact same thing but times 10. I can barely, and I mean barely, make out the sounds of A Quiet Farewell or Project 2. Everything's just become so drawn out, elongated, so so torn apart and broken that it's become something completely different. It's... It's become nothing. If I were to sit down and hand you a guide, a map, into nothingness, what would that look like? I mean seriously, what would that look like? What would that path be? I have no clue. But I can, I can guess. Probably start at the past, you know? Watch the earth and humanity slowly plunge into this, this darkness. Then after that I'd probably move to the present what it's like to live with the weight of the consequences of the past. And then finally, I'd probably move to the future. You know, a time when the past is no longer a place, the present's no longer a place, but just an object, like too far out of reach to even grasp. I can't tell you what a map in a nothing list would look like. I can't, because I don't know. But I think I could tell you what it would sound like. The world is coming to an end. Hey, uh, Edling Jackson here. I forgot to record the outro, so the video's over. But on a more serious note, though, uh, if you did enjoy watching this video, uh, please feel free to check out my Patreon. The link should be in the description. It has a lot of other bonus content, like bi-weekly uh, record reviews of records that are in my collection, as well as bonus content from this video and even the script. So if that kind of thing interests you, uh, definitely check that out.
On top of that, I also have a podcast with my two online friends, uh, Luke On Demand and A Bucket of Jake. It's called The Good Enough Podcast, and we talk about music and a lot of other weirder, more off-topic shit. I don't know. It's a lot of fun, so listen to it, watch it. It's available everywhere. And last, but definitely not least, if music isn't really your thing and you're more of a movie guy, I also have a podcast with my dad called Parental Guidance Neglected, so definitely go, you know... Look that up. It's on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the whole business. Seriously, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun making this video, and uh, I promise I'll have stuff uh, out soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.